Hello again everyone, welcome back to Decode Tech. Hope you all are doing well. Anyway, so we've been using idle for our editor mainly, and that's okay for beginning Python scripts and just general uh, messing around with Python. But if you wanna get serious about development, I really recommend you look into a more full-featured code editor or IDE. So most programmers consider their IDE a pretty big deal. Uh, now, what is this IDE I'm talking about? It's an integrated development environment. So it has like all the tools you need. And we haven't used very many tools yet and we might not for a while, but I wanted to show you how to install one now because I'm gonna be using it to help me better explain some of these Python topics. So there are a, a seemingly endless amount of styles and different featured editors out there and it can be kind of hard to know which one to choose. And some people really preach your editor, like, oh, you gotta have this editor. Uh, so I'm not going to do that, but I do have the one I'm going to show you today as a recommendation. So I kind of categorize it in three different um, styles of editors. One is just like a glorified text editor, uh, kind of like Idle or Notepad++ even takes it a step farther. And then there are full-blown IDEs where they have everything from code highlighting to code formatting to debugging tools to source control, which we'll look into more later. Don't worry about that for now. And generally they can be tied to a specific language. They have a lot of tools around a specific language. Not always, but uh, generally that's how it is. And then there's kind of the in-between where they're a little bit more than a fancy code editor, but yet they're not quite a full-blown IDE. And that's what we're gonna look at today. And the one we're gonna look at is called VS Code or Visual Studio Code. Not to be confused with Visual Studio, which is a full-blown IDE, but this is Visual Studio Code. It's made by Microsoft and it's cross-platform, which means it'll run on Windows, Linux, or Mac OS. And it's kind of new for Microsoft, but here recently they've been open sourcing projects. And that means they let other people contribute and kind of make it more of a community-driven thing, which is often really nice. And it is really starting to take off, especially in the Python community. So let's look at getting VS Code on our Mac. So let's type in VS Code in the search bar and if you're using Google it should be the top entry here Visual Studio Code and it should auto detect your operating system and say download for Mac right on the home page so I'm just gonna hit that now you see your download will start and it'll bring you to a getting started page that can help you get started with VS Code uh, we're just gonna ignore that page for now you can read that on your own if you want but once your download is done you might want to click on downloads and then click on Visual Studio Code now it's going to say Visual Studio Code is downloaded from the internet. Are you sure you want to open it? So Mac often has, if you don't download something straight from their app store, they're a little scared of it. It's kind of a security thing. Just go ahead and hit open anyway. And now it's going to bring you back to the getting started page again in the web browser. Just ignore that and let's go back to our editor. So here it brings you to a welcome page and I'm just going to expand my window here. And this just tells you a little bit of information about it and tries to help you get started. And so you can read over that if you want. I'm gonna uncheck the show welcome page on startup because I don't want it to re-go to this page every time I open VS Code or reload it as we'll see later on. So I'm just gonna uncheck that box. Uh, you can leave it checked for now if you want. And then you see up here is a little tab at the top. So that's one feature I really like about VS Code is you can have tabs of files open all at the same time, much like your web browser has different web pages and different tabs. So instead of having to open a new idle instance for every file, I can just open a bunch of tabs. But I'm gonna exit that out for now because I'm not interested in that. Now we have a blank window here. So how do we navigate VS Code? Well here on the left is the main buttons you'll need. The top one here is for viewing your files and folder options. The next one is a search. The next one down is for source control, which I mentioned briefly, but we'll get into that more later. The next one is for debugging, and debugging is just troubleshooting your code that's not working or testing your code. So how it got its name is back in the day when early computers were getting programmed, they had paper that they would program by punching holes in certain spots, and whether a hole was punched or not stood for the binary ones or zeros. Anyway, one time a literal bug got on this code paper and messed up the running of the code. So ever since then, they call it a bug in your code when you have a problem with your code. And then lastly here, we have an extensions. This is what makes this editor powerful. You can install different things to help you out with your specific language 
or just other nice features that you want to have in your editor. You can also go up here at the top and select various things to do things here in code, different menus there that have many options. So to start off, let's go under the extensions tab and let's search for Python. Now if you're connected to the internet, you should be able to find extensions, otherwise it might not work. But this top one here, or you can double check, make sure it's the one that has like 44 million downloads. It'll show you right there how many downloads it has. And that's the one we're gonna want. It'll give us some debugging tools and some other Python things. If you want, it can be helpful to read the documentation here down below on it. It tells you a little bit about it and different things to configure. But I'm just gonna go ahead and hit install on that and that'll install it to VS Code. So it's very straightforward. And there it's already installed. Now I'm gonna go back to my file browser now this is kind of like Finder. You can navigate your files through this. And here we see we don't have any folder open yet, so it says open folder. So we're gonna to wanna to open a folder and you'll want to, whether it be in documents or wherever you have a folder with your Python files, you'll want to open it here. I'm gonna open desktop because I have a hello.py file in there. So I'm gonna hit open. And now my editor is gonna reload. And if you didn't uncheck that welcome page, it's gonna pop back up. But now we see we have our file, our folder open rather, uh, called desktop, right there's the name of the folder. And down here is our files or files and folders within our desktop. Up here we can add files straight from VS Code or we can add a folder. And here's a file that's already in. So I'm gonna click on hello.py and you see that opens up a new tab. Now it says pylint is not installed down here in the corner. Just ignore that for now. Linting is, it gives you code recommendations. There's um, some standards of how people want your code formatted and linting helps you with that and points out possible problems or errors with your code. So for now, we're just gonna ignore that. But notice when I click on a file, it opens up here in a tab. Now notice the italics. If it's in italics, you're just viewing that file. So if I were to click on another file, it'll just overwrite that file. For example, I'm gonna create a new file here and I'm gonna name it test.py. Now, if I click on hello, you see it's in italics. And then if I click on test.py, it'll overwrite hello tab and put test.py there. But if you double click on it, you'll see the text turn just into normal text from italics and then that means it'll stay there now if I click hello.py, it'll open that in a new tab, and so then I can tab through my different files. All right, so I got rid of all the other files and just have my hello tab. I'm gonna double click on it to make it in the editing. And you see I have hello world ready to run. So how do you run your code? Well, you can go either under debug and hit start debugging, or you can go under the little debug tab on the left side and hit the little start button. Now if you start, you don't have any debugging configuration selected, so you have to select one from their options. I'm gonna select Python file. And now you'll see down at the bottom, it opens up in terminal tab, and it has some kind of weird looking information here uh, that mainly has to do with VS Code stuff. And then right underneath all that is gonna be our output, which outputted hello world, or it could output a error message or a traceback message if there was a problem. So that's another thing I like about VS Code, whereas in idle, it'll redirect your output into the interactive shell. VS Code, just right inside of the program, has its own shell at the bottom. So another thing to note is down in the bottom left-hand corner is our version of Python it's using for this file. If I click on that, it gives me options to use different Python versions installed on this computer, uh, but for now, I'm just gonna leave it at Python 3.7. Now open your debug, you wanna hit this little setting button and that'll open a launch.json, and that is your current Python debugging settings for this workspace. And you'll wanna save that file, and then if you ever wanna modify it, that's the file you modify for this current setting. And I'm just gonna exit out of that. If you wanna do your global settings, or for all workspaces you ever do, you can come down here to the bottom left corner, there's a little gear icon, and you can click on settings. And this will change settings for uh, your global settings. And there's all kinds of different settings you can change, and I won't get into those in this video. So I'm gonna exit out of settings. Also, another thing with this bottom left gear is the command palette option. There's many different um, useful commands that it has built in here, and that's how you access that. Now I'm gonna go back to my file explorer, and now you see, now that we ran a debug, 
we have this VS Code folder within our desktop. I'm going to click the little down arrow that brings me into that folder. And now our launch.json uh, file is there with our settings. So if you ever need to change it, you can either search for it or you can just open it right in that folder. So that's the basics of getting VS Code up and running on your computer. I uh, hope you found this informative. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below. I'd be glad to try to help you out. And as we go along, I'll be showing you more and more features that this editor has to offer. It really is a really nice tool to have. If you're interested, you can really customize it too. There's different color themes and all kinds of different things. You can change from font sizes to fonts, um, different icons, all kinds of different features. But that's going to do it for today's video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. If you know somebody else that might find this interesting, please share the video with them. And if you're not already, consider subscribing for more content right like this. And I hope to see you all in the next video.